Hey guys, uh, the gate was 8.58 million, that's, that's US dollars. The attendance was 17,588, sold out. Highest grossing single night event in arena history. Fight of the night, obviously went to uh, Gaethje and Fizia. Uh, performance of the night went to Hadley and Gunner. They all won $50,000, so congratulations to them. Go ahead, brother. Curious, obviously, great main event ending for Leon. How did you see the fight and how did you score it? How did I score the main event? I really didn't. It was a tough fight to score. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't really. I was literally standing in there, not knowing what was going to happen, and then Buffer came over and whispered in my ear. What did you make of this performance? I mean, his takedown defense is incredible. Lynette, Lynette we come over here. He wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't. He, his takedown defense was great. He wouldn't let himself be pressured against the cage. What did you make of Leon's performance overall? Whose performance? Leon's. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I expected a lot more wrestling out of Usman th th than I saw. And when he did try to wrestle, you know, obviously Leon did a great job, you know, especially if you compare it to the first fight. You just shared a quote from Teddy Atlas saying that when he's always heard trainers say that when a fighter wins a belt, they become 30% better overnight. Yeah, I just retweeted that. Yeah, yeah that, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I believe it, and I think that there's, there's absolutely a different level of confidence that you have when you win that type of a fight, um, and I can't even imagine the amount of nerves guys have going into that first fight that you might not feel the second time, and knowing that you have the, the power and the ability to knock the same opponent out, plus you got to look at Usman, who might be a little more gun-shy, you know, if you think of all the wars that he's been in with all the great fighters that he's beat, uh, this is the guy who knocks him out. Do you think Usman was a little bit more gun shy tonight? Do I think Usman was? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, that's what I thought was going to happen going in. I thought he was going to be very gun shy. I thought he was going to be, you know, holding on to those legs all night. He did the exact opposite. He only shot a few times and uh, he was willing to mix it up in there. Obviously, we had Colby Covington cage side. He wants to fight Leon in July. I'm curious if that's the fight you're interested in, or do you need to see how it plays out? Yeah, I don't know when we'll do it, but yeah, that's the fight that makes sense. And Colby came here, cut weight, you know, and, and did everything to, to be here for this fight. He deserves the fight. So it's Leon Edwards. Not to mention the fact that he's, you know, you know, the second or third best guy in the world. So it is Leon versus Colby next. Yeah. yeah. Colby was in here and he said that flew out here on a day's notice uh, and cut 18 pounds overnight to make weight uh, on Friday. Is that true? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Dana, you just talked yeah. about the potential return in July that's been discussed. Obviously, Tom Aspinall, he looks like he's been doing a great job uh, presenting on the broadcast tonight, but he wants to return this summer. Marcin Tabora is the guy that's been discussed. Is that a fight that could potentially make a event of the London show this summer? Yeah, I have no idea. Obviously, if Aspinall is ready and we come back to England, we, we would obviously use him. But we don't have a date for England. I mean, we, we didn't even know what the hell was going to happen tonight. So, um, But yeah, it looks like England has a world champion now, and, and uh, we're going to be doing title fights here more. Yeah, so, that, that's yeah. great news for the fans. And for yourself as a massive fight fan, you, you love it over here as well. There's probably going to be some of the biggest nights in UK MMA history on the horizon, even bigger than this tonight now. I agree, and if you look at that division, you know, there's a lot of great fights to make now if, if Leon's a champ. And, uh, you know, for people who've never been here, I say it all the time about the fans and the energy and things here, but also, every, every time you do a fight, it's about a destination. This, this city has... The best hotels, great restaurants, I mean, the, the shopping is unbelievable. There's, this is such a great place to come if you've never been. Not to mention the history and all the other things that are here. It's just, it's a great place. I'm, I'm so pumped that we're actually able to, you know, do, do big title fights here with, with one of your own. We really appreciate it as well. I know, I don't think you saw it during the week, but Connor said, you know, London was potentially discussed for the Chandler fight, and he obviously pitched Croke Park in Dublin as well which the logistics of that have always been difficult, hasn't it? Is that something that you think, before Connor's career is over, he's going to have to main event in Dublin again with the star power he's got now? Well, obviously when, when Connor was the champ and the double champ, I mean, I, I wanted to do Croke Park so bad, but logistically it just it never worked out for us. We, we couldn't uh, 
we couldn't get them to work with us to, you know, they closed the subways down at a certain time that, that wouldn't have worked. And, um, and, and obviously we'd love to come back to Dublin too, but I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't, I don't even know when he's going to fight yet. And, and his next fight definitely wouldn't be in Ireland. Daniel, just over here. Yep, hi. Um, I know you said that Colby would be next for Leon, but I, I'm wondering if you saw that Islam Makashev uh, said that he would like to fight Leon in Abu Dhabi. I just wondered what your thoughts were on that. Islam said that he wants to fight Leon in Abu Dhabi. She wanted to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, Colby's next. Yeah, Colby's next. And I know you spoke about... Um, we're going back to Abu Dhabi October 21st, but it definitely won't be Colby. I mean, it won't be uh, Leon and... And you mentioned about, you know, business here in London, with Leon being champion. What does that do? We see the reaction that the fans had with the, with the chance, the headshot. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what that does for business here in the UK, having Leon as champion? Yeah, like I was just saying to him, it's huge. This is a great destination for people who've never been here before. It's an incredible city with, with, you know, more than just coming for the fight. There's so much you can do here in London. Uh, you know, you can fly in on a Thursday with your family or however you want to do it and have an incredible weekend here. It's one of the greatest cities on earth. And uh, the weather isn't always great, but uh, you, you, can, you can tough through it. But this, this city's amazing, and to have a champion here now, it's fun. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do some big fights here. Do you see, sorry, last one for me, do you see uh, London as being a regular pay-per-view destination for you in the future? London being a regular pay-per-view destination? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if the champ fights three times a year and, and, and we'll, you know, we, we, we do them over here in London, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, realistically, when you think about it, <clears throat> um, We'd want to come over here, especially since COVID and everything that's been going on. You want to come over here as much as we possibly can. And you got to imagine if we did a fight in Vegas with them, you know, give a lot of people from uh, England an opportunity to go over to Vegas too. So, yeah. I just want to say thanks again for coming to the UK. Great show again. Um, the last time you were in attendance, so not the last show, the one before that when you were here, you struggled to pick a fight. You struggled to pick a fight of the night. You end up giving everyone a bonus. Did you struggle again tonight to work out who was the performance of the night? Did you struggle to figure out who should get the bonus tonight? No, it was pretty, it was pretty easy. Pretty easy to figure out tonight, yeah. And um, also, Edward's coming out of Team Renegade, his gym. He's got Jake Hadley, Jai Herbert, and Arnold Lallon obviously fighting soon. Does that really show how much, how forward the UK has come, you know, in the level of competition we can now offer against around the world? So, Leon Edwards. How, how, how far England has come in, in the MMA world? Yeah. I mean, if you look, I think the first time we came over here was like 2002. And it was like one jiu-jitsu school over here. And, but if you look at the amount of talent since then that's come out of um, this region, not, not just this, this country, but um, yeah, it just keeps getting better and better and bigger and bigger. And, and again, when you have, it's like when we came over here to Manchester with Michael Bisbing, you know, that, that really started the whole explosion over here. And now that you have a champ who has defended the title, we're bringing big title fights over here now. It's just, it, it's, it's a huge game changer for, for, for uh, the UK. And would you, would you um, go anywhere else in the UK location wise, or is London going to be your main pay per view location? Now, I've had this debate with, you know, people are always asking me, why don't you go here, why don't you go there? Um, yeah, the, the answer is yes. I, I don't know, we just have to figure it out. It's just something that we have to get in the office and look at and, and, and figure out. I mean, the O2 has been great to us, and, and London is a great city uh, to, to hold fights, and, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see, but the answer is yes. And, and even if we didn't take Edwards somewhere else, we'd do fight nights, you know, all across England. But yeah, we're, we're going to start traveling again here. Get out of the apex. The apex is getting a little too cozy. We gotta, we gotta start getting out there and traveling again. Uh, fantastic. Really appreciate you coming back. Hey Dana. Thank you. Far right. Far right. Yep. Hey. Hey. Uh, the O2, the lights went out for for a few seconds. You know what went on there? I have no clue. Some production <laughs> shit. Okay. Uh, also, yeah. Go, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I wanted to uh, ask you about the point deduction uh, for Leon. What were your thoughts? Did you agree with it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was a blatant fence grab that stopped the takedown. You, you got to do it. 
especially when you look at stylistically how that fight goes. Usman's thing is to wrestle and take him down, and obviously, uh, you know, Leon wants to stand up, and he had to take that point. Were you happy to see that? Because it's kind of been an argument in past fights that it, it hasn't been removed. Like, points don't get taken off of friend's grabs, or are you happy to see that be, like, action be taken right away? Was I happy to see it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I was happy to see it, but I, I'd rather there's no fouls and no points yeah. taken. I, you know, I don't ever like to see a guy in such an important fight lose a point, but you can't blatantly grab the fence the way that he did. Yeah, one final one. Uh, what do you think is next for Kamar Usman? What's next for Usman? I don't know. You know, he's got a, uh, you know, it's one of those things where he goes home and spends some time with his family and get his head clear and then let us know what he's thinking next. You know, it's not really what we're thinking. What is he thinking? Thank you. Yep. Dana hey, Down, you're picking up back off uh, the question about traveling back to the UK. Michael Biz no, traveling in the UK, sorry. Michael Bisping had his title defense in Manchester, Darren Till, Paul in Liverpool. Do you think that after this, Leon deserves the opportunity to fight in front of his crowd in Birmingham? Birmingham, is that the question? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the arena situation over in Birmingham. What is it? Do you know it? Um, no, it's the NEC arena. Um, you guys went there, I think it was UFC 138. How big is it? Uh, I think it can hold like 12,000 people. Yeah. All this shit's a blur to me. You know what I mean? I do this every Saturday night, so um, I don't know. I don't know. It, the answer is yes. I mean, we, we would absolutely positively look at it and, um, you know, just something we got to figure out. And I know that you, well, you pretty much confirmed that Colby's going to get the next shot, but if Jorge Masvidal was to do something spectacular against Gilbert Burns, would you be willing to give him the title shot, given the history that he has with Leon? Colby, Colby gets the next shot, no matter what happens. Hey, Dana, Dana. Yeah. in front of you here. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, during the week, there was a little bit of controversy, maybe because you weren't looking for controversy with this Conor McGregor thing with the USADA situation. He's come out and he said that USADA is going to be fired, that perhaps there won't be any USADA with the UFC. What's, what's the, the latest on that? Conor said that USADA is going to be fired, so he was trying to ask the latest on that. <laughs> so, so what's your question? What's, what's the latest with that? Are, are you going to maintain this relationship that you've got? Um, have you ever heard of Jeff Novinsky? Yeah. yeah. Ask him these questions. I don't give a shit about any of that stuff anymore. That's his problem. I don't get involved in the drug testing situation whatsoever. I know nothing about it, and I don't want to know nothing about it. I leave it to the expert. He's the expert in this thing, and, and you guys call him and interview him anytime about it. It seems pretty important, though. I mean, this is your biggest star who's coming back after two years out. This seems like the only thing in the way of it happening. He's ready to go. He could probably fight tomorrow if he wanted to. Connor, right? And Mike Chandler, certainly as well. But this seems like the only stumbling block you guys have left. Yeah, I mean, Connor. Coming back and, and coaching the Ultimate Fighter was like a step uh, toward coming back. You know, he was telling me Monday that it felt good to be there again, felt good to be in the gym with other guys, felt good to train, felt good to be in Vegas, you know, all that stuff. I think it's, you know, I don't know if Connor's not ready to come back and fight tomorrow, but the Ultimate Fighter was, was, a, was a big step in that direction and getting him back and getting him mentally and probably emotionally ready to start training and get back to camp. By the way, actually, you're a big boxing guy. Can you believe they haven't made this Tyson Fury and Alexander Isik fight yet? Can I believe that what hasn't happened? Which uh, Fury and Usyk. Usyk and, Usyk and, yeah. yeah. It, it's scheduled though, right? Is it? No? Never have? Welcome to boxing, boys. Uh, I, I mean, is it shocking? Yes. Is it shocking? No. I mean, it's just, that is boxing. It's just the, the, the way that that sport always seems to play out. The big fights that should happen never happen. When they do, it's it's always late. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, that's the stuff that used to drive me crazy as a fan. And it's, it's literally part of how I designed this company to not be. You know, we, we, we try to make the big fights when it's time to make the big fights. And I mean, think about this. Tonight, on the prelims, you saw 11 and 0 versus 10 and 0 on the prelims. When's the last time you watched any show with any organization anywhere where two and, and that fight was technically incredible, right? You don't see that stuff ever except here. Thank, thank and that's by design. Hi, Dana. Just over here. 
Um, one year ago, I asked you, are uh, uh, UK fans the best in the, in the world? And you said, if you've never watched a fight here, you need to definitely come here and watch one. Um, so I wanted to ask you, how did the atmosphere today compare to uh, the atmosphere to other fights you've been at? Yeah, well, there's, there's great atmospheres. you got Australia, which... I mean, I mean, how did the atmosphere in the UK today compare to all the other fights in the UK that you've been at? How did it compare to other fights in the UK and the atmosphere today? Oh, 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 yeah. No, it's always awesome. I mean, I, I don't know if I could compare it. I mean, this place is always, from the first fight of the night to, to, to the main event, um, you know, it could be one of your own fighting for the title or, you know, two guys from anywhere. And, and this place is always fired up, excited. You know, I love the chanting. I love the, um, you know, they, they, they're all, it seems like it, it, it's almost scripted, you know, how, how everybody just picks up the same thing and starts chanting. Half the time, I don't even know what the hell they're saying, but they do. It's, it's pretty fascinating. It's a fun place to come watch a fight. And I know a lot of people personally who flew out here for, for this fight um, to, to check it out. And you did mention that um, you're going back to Abu Dhabi in October. Is it safe to say that Islam Akhshev will be headlining that card? That who? Islam is going to be headlining the card in Abu Dhabi. Um, it's possible. We, we, we don't have anything done yet. We, we haven't even talked to Islam about it yet. So. And I know it, you may say it's possible to this next question as well, but um, Benil Dariush and Charles Oliveira, would the winner of that be facing Islam Akhshev? I don't know yet. And just a final one from me. I think in the last week or so, there, there were some reports that um, Alex will be defending against uh, Yair Rodriguez. I think he's targeted for International Fight Week. Are you able to confirm that maybe that is the plan? What was it? Wolfenovsky versus Yair for International Fight Week. Ah, uh, shit, I don't know. Uh, but those two are definitely fighting. I don't know when it will be, though. And just yeah. to find a very light-hearted question, one more thing you said last... But, but if it was finalized, we would have announced it. You know what I mean? Uh, one more thing you said to me last week, uh, last year, sorry. Uh, one thing you love about coming to England is you love the Asian slash Indian food. So have you had time to have a good curry? Jim Connor last night. Yes, yeah, so it was incredible. It's amazing. Yeah. The, the, the Indian food here is next level. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dana, just wanted to ask where we're at. Just uh, where are we at with uh, Paddy Pimplett's return and when can we see Paddy back? Yeah. Um, possibly in October. Do you miss him on nights like this and in, in, in pay-per-views in general? And do you still think he's a bigger draw as he was in December? Do, I think... do you miss him on nights like this and do you still think he's just as big of a draw as you did in December? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, we have a lot of guys that, 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 you know, depending on where you take them, that are exciting and fun. But Patty's awesome and always fun to have on a card. Um, yeah, I guess the answer is yes to your question. Yeah, thank you. Just a quick one here. Yeah. I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on Anderson Silva being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Anderson Silva being inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's one of the greatest of all time. And, um, yeah, yeah. Finally. I mean, he should be. We invited him out, but he, could, he couldn't make it. We, we wanted him to be here for it, but he couldn't make it tonight. Dana, one more. Dana, Go ahead, brother. Um, uh, when Justin was in here earlier, he was saying that he fought Fizia, who was behind him in the rankings. He now should fight in front of him in the rankings. Um, is is that how you see that going? Do you think he'll fight someone in front of him in the rankings next? And the only guy that isn't booked, I believe, is Dustin Poirier. Would that make sense? And is there any idea of what's going on for Dustin next? Do you want me to say that again? It's a long question. <laughs> Above should Gaethje be fighting someone in front of him in the rankings, and if so, should it be Poirier? Uh, Gaethje. Gaethje? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, t t t t you know, tonight uh, he fought a tough fight, close fight, and uh, I don't know. We'll see. It, 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 I understand what you're asking me. It puts him in like a weird position uh, tonight. Yeah. I, I don't know yet. I don't know. Th this is, you know, a lot of these questions. We go home. And Tuesday, we get back in the matchmaking room and we start kicking ideas around. But The problem is the fans are all excited now, Dane. We, we want to know now. I hear you. Uh, uh, well, the, the other thing is, I think uh, Jojo Wood, uh, she uh, said in the media day that I think she's got this fight and then only one more fight on her contract. Does a win tonight mean that contract negotiations could start up with her again? Jojo Calderwood has one more fight left since she won tonight. 
Yeah, we love her. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll get something done with her. Yeah, she's she's awesome to have around. And uh, the answer is yes. Hell yes. Great. We'll get a new de deal done with Jojo. Yeah. Thanks, man. That's cheers, David. One more on Avery. One more question from me. Um, are we going to see the Power Slap in the UK? Because I love that show. Man. Are we going to see Power Slap come to the UK? My man. Um, yeah. Um, it, it's it's fascinating. You asked me that because. Um, the numbers were, it, it's, it's baffling, it, it, it's funny because it, it's, it's unbelievable and baffling, but at the same time, when I looked at this thing back in 18, and, and it had 350 million views coming out of, you know, with the production value that it had and everything else, my big question was what would happen if it was done right, and we found out. Um, and then tonight, uh, Frank, who is the president of the, of the company, hit me up and said that he's been fielding international calls um, over the last several days. So, you know, a, you know, a lot of people were shitting on this thing. Watch what we do with this thing in the next two years. And the answer to your question is yes. What, what we're doing now is we're going out and, um, you know, getting this thing sanctioned everywhere. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can ask anybody, if you know anybody personally that was at the live event that night, it was fucking unbelievable. It was so much fun, it, it was crazy. So, yeah, I'm actually looking for, I'm excited about this thing. I haven't been there, like this fired up since like 2008 or something. So, yes, I'm excited about it. If you need a matchmaker, let me know. Lots of guys interested. I got it, all right. I, I might hit you up on that. We actually have a matchmaker, her name's Erica. It's a woman, actually, who's the matchmaker for it. Yeah, but thank you. Yeah, over here. Yeah. Uh, first question is, you said that uh, Colby is next uh, for Leon Edwards, so where does uh, this situation put uh, Bilal Muhammad? He's on a great win streak, uh, he's been complaining that Colby is lacking him, so what do you think about his, his position right now? You know you got a bad accent when my translator doesn't know what you no, said. No, I have a bad accident, yeah. <laughs> What's next for Bilal Muhammad? What's next for Bilal? Uh, yeah, uh, where's Hunter? Who's Bilal fighting? I forgot. We're working on Shavkat. Huh? Shavkat. Shav yeah. yeah. Rachmanov. We're working on it. That's a fun. And uh, I'm speaking about a longer perspective, like five, ten years. Uh, you said that now Britain has a champion and you can, you can hold uh, pay-per-view events. What about having pay-per-view events in England even without British champion, with that kind of fans? <coughs> I think that's a really bad idea. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you do fight nights and they're they're not paid. Listen, times are tough right now, and you know we do like anywhere from 12 to 14 pay-per-views a year to, to, to try to do pay-per-views. Uh, you work for ESPN? No, no, no. Okay. Um, yeah, it's tough to do to people. That that that, that won't happen. Not while I'm here, anyway. Okay, and uh, the last one for me. Uh, every time you come to Europe, the reception is great. The last year's uh, Paris won one of the best year's event. Uh, so do you have any specific plans for this year for a new location or maybe some location in Europe that uh, weren't used in many years, like Sweden, Poland, Czech Republic? Do you have any new locations in Europe that you plan on going to this year? Yeah, so I was just telling, I did a scrum yesterday. I was telling everybody that we have we have fights booked up until June right now. And on the, uh, you know how the war room is laid out, I'm sure you've seen it online or whatever, but it'll tell the date and then where it is. And, and when it tells where it is, we have like five or six locations written on all, all the boards. So we're still kind of working on, on where we're going. But like I've said many times, we're, we're ready to travel. And we're gonna go to places that are easy to do business and uh, cities that are destinations. You know, last year every event was a sellout. We sold out every event last year and with the exception of Brazil this year, every gate has been like a Madison Square Garden type gate. So, you know, the fact that we're getting back out there and hitting these locations that we haven't been to in a long time, it's probably gonna take us three years to hit all the places, you know, that we've been in the past, so it's not, not anything that's going to really 
uh, ha happen this year. We'll hit all these big destinations, but over the next three years, we will. Unless the world loses its mind again or something. I, I don't know. Thank you. And Thank sorry you. Sorry for the accent. What do you say? Sorry for the accent. Are you fucking with me now? That was fucking perfect. <laughs> Thank you. David, down here. Um, when I spoke to you last year, you said that getting to Africa was one of your bucket list things and one of your main priorities. Africa? Yes. Yeah. Is that still the case uh, now that you no longer have African champions? Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, listen, it's great if we have African champions, but um, that, that's not the... That, that, that's not the, the reason we go there anyway. We, we, it's, it will happen before I retire. Two things will happen before I retire. We will do a fight, at least one fight in Africa, and there will be a PI in Africa before I'm done here. Fair enough. And I, I think earlier this week it was reported that you confirmed that Hamza Jamayev will be going up to middleweight. Uh, do you guys have any fights in, in, on the radar for him that you're potentially thinking of? Where in the rankings would he jump in? Hamza? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Probably October. Thank yep. you. Dana, yep. um, recently you've been doing some videos where you make like announcements. I was just wondering when you're going to release the next one. When I get home. <coughs> when I get home. Okay. Yeah. Little teaser there for us. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, yeah. Pro probably next week. Yeah. Just a, a quick one in here. Was it nice to meet your new business partner, KSI, tonight? Was it nice to meet KSI tonight? I've, I've known KSI for a while. Yeah. I didn't meet him tonight. I, I met him a few years. Yeah, he came over to headquarters a few years ago, before any of this craziness, and, and played video games with us and, and did some stuff like that. Yeah, no, I've known him for a few years. He's a great kid. Happy to do business with him. Did I what? Are you happy to do business with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's a great kid. I like him a lot. Yeah, I, I was happy to see him come out tonight. Anyone else? You done with me? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, Dana. Uh, sorry for my English. I would like to ask you, if possible, with only board, uh, uh, this year, in 2023, is possible that USC can to Spain? 2023, would, could we go to Spain? Um, yeah, so it, 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 it's interesting that you asked me that question. You know, Spain is obviously a place that we'd love to go, and Italy is another, is another spot that we would like to hit, too. But like I was saying to the gentleman in the back, Probably going to be like a three-year process as we start to, uh, you know. It's funny because 44 events a year used to seem like a lot until you take a few years off from traveling around the world and then you got to go back and hit all those spots again. Um, but it's going to take like a three-year process. But the answer to your question is yes. Spain and Italy would love to go to too, just like we would love to do a fight in Africa. Okay. We will wait in Spain as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Was that a question? What did you say? I have no idea. Is there a white inside here? He just told you to hurry up. He said hurry up. Okay. I'm on it. Thanks a lot, you guys. Have a great night. Cheers, Dana. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you, guys.